Shell Canada, Full Yard Carpet, and the Pincher Creek Tourism Action Committee. Okay, you got a right hand turn coming up. It'll be a 90 degree corner coming up in 500 meters. 300 meters. 200. There it is. Wait away. Go. For the second year in a row, the Rocky Mountain Road Rally wound its way through the Pincher Creek and Crow's Nest Pass area. Although this scene looks very similar to last year as final preparations were made, there were some differences organizers loved to flaunt. For one, this year's event grabbed the attention of five more entrants. Number two, the quality of drivers and co-drivers improved a notch. And number three, organizers went the extra mile, so to speak, to ensure the best possible roads were used. That was the job of the rally master or course organizer. And when he set out to do it, he had certain goals in mind. Looking for something basically that will challenge the drivers. It's got to be uh, a road that is not readable in that uh, when you're driving it, you're not quite sure what is, what is around the next corner or over the next crest. And this makes for improving the driver's capabilities too, of course. They get better and better the more roads like this that they can drive. But they have to be able to drive it flat out without actually knowing what's coming. He had some of the finest drivers in North America to put to the test. One of those was a man out of Burlington, Vermont, Paul Chenier, who has come to the forefront of rally driving in three short years. He, along with co-driver Scott Weinheimer, were considered the favorites this year. Part of that had to do with their vehicle, a four-wheel drive Audi Coupe Quattro. A win this year would add to his accomplishments, including a 10th place finish in one of the most grueling rallies, the 86th International Olympus Rally. Another driver to look for was Tim Bendel out of Calgary. He and co-driver Art McKenzie had to make up for last year when they rolled about halfway through the course. The talent was definitely there to make the incident disappear in a hurry, and that's backed up by Bendel's national titles in 84 and 85. Speed is no stranger to Niel Leslie of Gananoque, Ontario. Along with his rally driving, Leslie has built two world speed record holding motorboats as part of his business. He came to the Rocky as the reigning North American production rally champion. Leslie finished every event he entered during 1987 and is seated internationally. Dan Gilliland and his wife and co-driver Betty Ann took third spot overall in last year's Rocky and first overall in the production B. This year they hope to somehow improve on that with their brand new Shelby CSX. Dan Gilliland also added to his list the National Driving Championship. In the past, Sean Bishop has impressed with his driving ability. This year he had a new vehicle, an 88 Mazda 323 GTX, to add to the challenge. But he also had the 85 and 86 Canadian Ladies Rally champion, Suzanne Stewart, alongside as a co-driver. Bishop plans on his busiest year on the rally circuit, including rallies in Dartmouth and Fredericton. The Rocky Mountain Road Rally is part of the Canadian National Championships as well as the North American Rally Cup. But what's even more special is the fact this is the only rally of its kind held west of Ontario. Spectators gathered with anticipation of the second annual event and the race was on.
Carpet Sales in Cowley is already well known for their huge selection of carpeting and linoleum, but they can also help with many other home renovation materials, like wallpaper, Venetian and vertical blinds, durable outdoor turf, and aqua flooring, perfect for bathroom floors, walls, and showers. And Full Yard Carpet Sales offers free delivery within a 160-kilometer radius of Cowley, and a rebate on your purchase to cover fuel expenses. For guaranteed first-quality goods and great prices, shop and compare at Full Yard Carpet Sales in Cowley. She was my best friend, you know, the first time I saw carnal knowledge with for the first time. I want you to tell you that there's just one little rogue molecule of jealousy about this visit from the ghost of girlfriend's past. Turning 30 seemed like some kind of death sentence. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden it's the most significant time of our lives. I can deal with the women you have slept with. The problem is what do I do about the women you want to sleep with? This can't happen. 30 something, Tuesday at 7, here on 2 and 7. The latest in fashions from the world's top designers. What's hot and what's not. The unique styles for 88. Classy. Creative, colorful. And daring. Fashion television, Tuesday nights at 11.30, right here on 2 and 7. Rallying is considered one of the most demanding and exciting forms of motorsport. In fact, some people go a step further and say it's the toughest auto competition in the world. It's a test of a car, the skill of a driver, and co-driver all rolled into one. Oh, by the way, I forgot, never mention the word roll to a rally driver. What rally driving is to most participants is addicting. The speed is certainly certainly gives you a rush, but uh, the ability to control a car around difficult road surfaces on a on a road that you you don't know where it's going is is what I enjoy. It uh, certainly keeps your brain exercised. The next stage in the Rocky Mountain Road Rally was designed for the so-called speed freaks. A new addition to this year's event offered a chance to open the cars right up along paved straightaways with a few challenging turns and bumps thrown in. We had it topped out about 8,000 RPM. It was about 95, as much as I could do. And so most of my other competitors will do about 110, 120 miles an hour on that. We were going as fast as we could go. We were at about 107, 108 miles an hour, foot on the floor in the top gear, and you just wait. I was in fourth gear uh, around 130 and 35 kilometers. Yes, sir. yes, and kilometers. I think we probably would have hit just about 100 miles an hour on the big straight there. Then it was
was time for the competitors to wind their way back to Pincher Creek, where the first day of rallying would end, and the competitors and cars alike would get a well-deserved break. But before that, it was time to fine-tune the little things in anticipation of day two. Each competitor had about an hour before the vehicle had to be parked and left alone. My hands are getting tired. Some of the crew got the cushy jobs, while others worked frantically. And of course, the dreaded engine work had to be done, but despite the pressure, some managed to laugh here and there. The time also gave the competitors the chance to reminisce about day one. Roads were uh, really fast, uh, a little bit of dust on some of them slowed us down, we could catch up on a little car or, or uh, get moving. A uh, few places where there was some real severe ice up on the uh, Lynx Creek stages towards uh, towards the, the western end of the stages and uh, they were quite interesting as we came downhill on the ice and the snow banks but uh, generally the roads were really good, we had a good time on them. Today they were very fast sweeping roads and the, the surface varied from loose marbles to hard packed. But in general they were very fast, quick roads. Well, it's like nothing I've ever seen. We're used to the forest rallies, which are tight and twisty. Most everything is under 100 miles an hour. Um, this here is pretty difficult to get used to because you know you are at high speeds and your slides are a lot longer. Uh, it takes it takes a lot more to get used to that because you just you know it only happens out here in Western Canada. Most of uh, the rallies in North America are tight and twisty. There's lots of surprises. There's lots of. Uh uh, tight spots that, that you don't expect to see and, and there's lots of hills and corners that you have no idea what's around them until you get there. We started off uh, in the last uh, third of the cruise so there was a lot of dust problems but the roads are, are real fast uh, there's some areas that got a lot of snow and ice but uh, in general real fast the dust is a problem in all the lower areas. We saw very nice roads, uh, hard roads, snow, ice I did enjoy my day very much, yes indeed. The major difference between this year's Rocky Mountain Road Rally and last year's event was the time frame. This one was spread over two days compared to last year's grueling one day jaunt. So that meant the entrants didn't have to challenge the roads at night. As far as a two day event compared to one from an entrance point of view, well, the opinions vary. Well, I really enjoy the idea of a two-day event. Uh, it's a, not really an advantage, and, but it certainly isn't a disadvantage. It just gives us more rally. It's a lot less stressful. We get some time to relax now, and, uh, and we've got a little bit more time than we normally would to fix any problems on the car. We've been having a couple problems with our brakes, and uh, it gives us more time to touch them up and get everything working right. Actually, I like it. It gets us to bed at a fairly early hour. There are a fair number of sta stage miles. Uh, in some ways, it's a disadvantage because some of the less experienced dri drivers don't tend to drive quite as well at night. Personally, I prefer long, more a long day but to do the rally completely in a day. Yeah. Uh, why would that be? Well, this, the, the big reason I think it's like us that come from Montreal. Uh, we have to manage to go back. And I think if we would, uh, we would stop like five or six next tomorrow morning, it's easiest for us to pack and get ready to go back. Mm -hmm. So it's a long drive <laughs> to go back in Montreal. It was the fabulous 60s. As I walk along, I wonder. Quality Records presents the fabulous 60s. A four record, four cassette, or two CD blast from the past. Strawberry Alarm Clock, Brooklyn Bridge, The Monkees, Joe Cocker, Everly Brothers, The Turtles, The Mamas and the Papas. 56 fabulous tracks. The 
the fabulous 60s, an era of fanciful dreams, of tuning in and dropping out. The Fabulous 60s, four giant albums, four sensational cassettes, or two super 70-minute CDs. The 60s were drive-ins, love-ins, rag-tops, and sock-offs. Fabulous 60s from Quality Records. Four LPs, four cassettes, or two super CDs. Here's how to order yours. Visa, MasterCard, COD charges call 329-1380. Or save COD charges by sending $24.95 for four LPs or four cassettes. Or $34.95 for two compact discs. Plus $4 postage and handling to The Fabulous 60s, P.O. Box 1120, Leftbridge, Alberta. Call now. Operators are standing by. Remember, this offer could end without notice. So call 329-1380 now. Please specify records, cassettes, or compact discs. For an up-to-date look at the sometimes unusual world of music, watch the new music. The latest in music and videos, Monday night at 11. The new music on 2 and 7. Day 2 offered the same as day 1. Good, fast, challenging terrain. Since all of the competitors knew where they stood in the pack after the first day, those drivers back in the standings had a chance to make up needed time and push the car and themselves to the limit. Those leading each of the respective classes could play it safe. A lot of the focus on this day were on the six race stages through the Porcupine Hills, stages that featured everything from all-out straightaways to hairpin turns. A new addition to this year's rally, and definitely worthwhile.
idea of a rally, as mentioned before, is to test the driver's ability on as many different terrains as possible and through various conditions. As the second day of competition continued, so too did the snow, much to the delight of the rally master. We rely on weather and road conditions to make it difficult. We love snow. I love snow. The competitors don't. They don't care for ice much, but I like a bit of ice. It adds a challenge. Dust is one of our biggest problems, and I try and pick roads that aren't going to get too dusty. But other than making the final service stop a little uncomfortable for the crews, the snow was a small factor on this day. Apart from making a wrong tire choice up on the top of the mountain, we went for snow tires thinking that we wouldn't be able to get up to the top on the normal gravel tires. However, the decision cost us 40 seconds. Well, the snow is only going to help, of course, with a four-wheel drive. But by that point, we were taking it a bit easy, just trying to go along and continue what we had for a lead. Uh, but the conditions really didn't change until the very end of the day. In the very last stage was when it really changed a lot. The goal of the less experienced drivers was to finish and to learn from the two days. I'm afraid some may have learned, except it was the hard way. Of the 26 entrants lined up Saturday morning for the start, 19 crossed the finish line. When all was counted and done, 26 race stages were held over the two days, consisting of 276 kilometers. 324 clicks were run over transits, or those roads from stage to stage. The two some expected to lead the pack lived up to their billing. Paul Chenier of Burlington, Vermont, along with co-driver Scott Weinheimer, finished with a combined time of 160 minutes 52 seconds over the race stages to end up as the overall winners. Calgary's Tim Bendel and his co-driver Art McKenzie took second spot overall, only 3 minutes 31 seconds behind the winning pace. Also add to the list of their accomplishments the Open Regional Championship. Dan Gilliland and his co-driver and wife Betty Ann of Michigan really pushed their brand new Shelby CSX and it turned out to be a rewarding rally for them. An excellent time of 168.30, third spot overall and winners of the production B class. The reigning North American production rally champion Niel Leslie and co-driver Brian Maxwell made their long trip from Ontario pay off, taking fourth spot overall and picked up points as a production A winner. The former Canadian production B-Class champion, Sean Bishop, found the touch behind the wheel of his new Mazda 323 GT. He, along with co-driver Suzanne Stewart, took eighth spot, good enough to win the regional production B-Class. Local Daryl Alexander and his co-driver, Baguette Shamir, took some time to get used to their new Datsun, but were still able to win the Open Novice Regional. Alexander, the Rocky Mountain Road Rally not only offered a challenge, but it was a great learning experience. I think we, we, we had lots of room for improvement, which is what we plan on doing at the start of the rally. We wanted to go in there, learn the car, get, get our team used to what we're doing. Uh, we didn't go out to, uh, to win, we went out to finish, and that we did. Had a few problems with the car, which we have all, all fixed up now. Um, it, was a, it was an excellent weekend. It did exactly what it was that we all wanted to do. For the more experienced drivers, including the winner, Paul Chenier, this rally is definitely worth the trip, but a little different from the usual stops during the season. Well, it's, it's faster than most I've been on, and it's longer than some of the ones that I've been on as well. But overall, it was good. I think the organization was, was good, and, uh, and the roads were good. The competitors were very good and, and very enjoyable. And how do you feel now? Are you pretty well burnt out? No, actually it's good because uh, all of yesterday we stopped at a reasonable time. We got a good night's sleep last night. We got up this morning and had breakfast and, and it was a good schedule. It wasn't, it wasn't very tiring for the driver, I didn't feel. And like many people involved in competitive sports, superstition comes into play. As was the case with second place finisher, Tim Bendel. I think I drove probably close to 90% of uh, you know my capacity. Uh, I was holding on to second. I knew I couldn't quite catch the quattro. I just wanted
wanted to keep the people behind me. So, uh, you know, I, I just kept my foot in it where I thought it was necessary and didn't take too many unnecessary chances. So you got to try to keep it on the road in order to finish. I learned that last year. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you about that. It feels good to finish. Yeah, it sure does. Uh, it was car number three again. I've got a little uh, suspicious uh, nature about that number. It's been three times I've rolled with that number and they gave it to me again. So uh, I, uh, I managed to get it switched with car number four. So uh, maybe that, that might have made the difference. I don't know. Rallying has come a long way in Alberta since 1973 when the first navigational type rally was held with little or no fanfare. Now organizers around the Pincher Creek and Crow's Nest Pass area have a commitment to hold the event in this district until at least 1992. That'll give it a chance to mature and grow over that time. In one short year, the number of quality drivers increased, and for the second time, the Rocky was a success. And there's room for more of that in the future. In fact, there's hope to bring international status to the Rocky Mountain Road Rally. Well, my understanding of the event and the way the organizers have got it planned out are that they're going to be making it a larger and larger event every year. Um, I believe that in the next few years, you're going to be seeing a lot more international competitors, a lot more international factory teams uh, make the level of competition for us local people a lot higher, but we'll certainly learn from them. Canada, Foliard Carpet, and the Pincher Creek Tourism Action Committee.